My luck is pretty terrible. Just last week, I burned my ramen. This week, I'm accused of first degree murder. So, what the hell do you do if you're in my situation? Cry since there's no attorney willing to represent you because there's tons of video evidence against you? Naturally, the answer is to play Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a visual novel developed and published by Capcom on the Game Boy Advance, though us English people wouldn't get this until the trilogy was poured over to the DS. The Ace Attorney series is a long-running one focused on one thing. Coffee. And defending people, but that's less important. In any given Ace Attorney game, you're supposed to protect the accused. While it does sound boring in practice, that could be further from the truth. Before I played Ace Attorney, I never knew I could be so invested in a legal drama turned visual novel, and I'm so happy that I did. After playing this, I played Justice for All, Trials and Tribulations, and both of the great Ace Attorney games. With all that said, it's time to head into the story. I mean, I gotta see how Phoenix protected his clients. Before we continue, this video has full spoilers for the entire game, so, so please don't continue this video if you haven't even touched the first game. The first turnabout is the first trial, obviously. This serves as a tutorial case and certainly the case of all time. The criminal is obvious, what happens is obvious, and yet, it's a perfect tutorial. It teaches the player what to do in a case and what to look for. Well, yeah, it's not the best case out there, it's certainly better than this. It's not bad, it's just fucking bad. This is where we get introduced to Phoenix Wright, the obvious protagonist of this and most future Ace Attorney games. He's simply an amazing character and just amazing. Phoenix is consistently funny and never gets boring throughout the entire trilogy and gets even better when his assistant is introduced. We'll talk about when the time is right. Right now though, we get to meet our mentor, Mia Fei, and she swells well. Mia helps a lot into getting to know what to do as an attorney and it's nice to know that we'll have her for the foreseeable future. The actual episode itself is alright. So. Frank saw it, get used to the pun-inspired names, is a culprit. This information is given us in the first few seconds of this episode, which is crazy. Though if you think about it, it's a great thing to do. With the culprit's identity out of the way, the player is able to focus on the other parts of the case, like trying to figure out how to prove the client's innocence. Or not, because Larry's a fucking dumbass. Our client is Larry Butts, a lifelong friend of Phoenix who's just hilarious here. It's kind of sad what they did to him in a certain later game, but I digress. Larry's such a dumbass, but written in a way that's amazing, which is how most of these characters are written. I can't understand how good the characters are in the Ace Attorney trilogy. Even though they have their quirks, none of their characters sacrifice for it. Back to the story itself, nothing too big gets revealed here. Frank killed the victim, we knew that, and the big twist comes with proving that Larry's innocent because the robber got the time mixed up. How, you may ask? because Frank used the thinker which had a clock in it. Overall, it's a pretty good introductory case, and it's also rather short. Here, we're only in the courtroom. In future episodes, you'll spend time in and out of the court, where you'll talk to witnesses and find evidence, and that's the basic gameplay loop, which is pretty awesome. A few years before I played Ace Attorney for real, I actually played this case thanks to one of my best friends, Anthony, and that's how I got interested in the franchise. Of course, it would take me a while to actually get the trilogy, but it's probably thanks to him that I'm such a big Ace Attorney fan. Oh, and before I finish this section, one of my friends has something to talk about, so I'll let him talk here. Ace Attorney 1 is definitely one of the weirdest games in the Ace Attorney franchise, mainly because it's the first game, so it suffers from first game syndrome. The first case of the game quite literally opens up with the judge asking you basic lawyer elementary questions. The killer's name is fucking Saw It, and the defendant is the worst character in the series, Larry Butts. <laughs> Given how the first case goes, it would not surprise me if the police just wanted Larry to go to prison and really didn't give a fuck how fucking painfully obvious saw it as the killer. It's... it's a case. The first case is 100% a case that exists, and at least it leads to a good case in Turnabout Sisters. So, with all that out of the way, it's time to head into the second episode, which has a lot of potential, especially for Mia Faye. I can't wait to see what future games have in store for her. Mia is dead. She's fucking dead. I assume, as with most players, this was a huge shock. It's crazy, and I commend Capcom for having the balls to do something this insane. And the episode doesn't waste any time with Mia dying. You just get a phone call, and BAM! She's dead. And just like before, the thinker was used to murder an innocent woman in cold blood. Makes you think. We also get to see the murderer, who later on we get to find out that this is Red White. The most stereotypical American that I've ever seen in my life that has a dumbass name. He's pink and purple. Is Capcom dumb? As the first real antagonist of the game, he's okay. There's not a lot to him that I enjoy, other than him being a silly exaggeration of Americans. We find out later on in the episode that he runs a company that's built on information, with it coming through and from blackmail. Though I'll talk about more about his company later on. 
for various reasons, Phoenix arrives at the office and discovers the body of Mia, but not before meeting Mia's sister, Maya. While this is obviously sad for Maya and Phoenix, not every day you get to see the best character in all fiction made. And when I say best character ever made in fiction, I mean it. Maya is quite possibly the best Ace Attorney character out there. Her humor, her sprites, her attitude, it's all amazing. And hey, there's a good reason why the fandom loves her. It's not because of murder, it's because why she's accused for murder. So yeah, this time, Maya's the accused. Since Maya's been arrested, there's only one person that can represent her. One person that could save her. Marvin Grossberg, but of course. He has experience, knowledge, wisdom, hemorrhoids. And he says no. Let's see the reason. Because of hemorrhoids, but also because of being blackmailed, but shh, saying hemorrhoids is funnier. With literally no one else to defend her, now it's time for Phoenix to actually do his job. This is where we get into the proper Ace Attorney gameplay, with the loop not changing for the whole franchise. In Ace Attorney, you have to go to different locations, talk to people, and get evidence. Sometimes there may be something new to do, like solve a puzzle, but that's really it. After that, you head into the courtroom, where you have to prove your innocence clients. After that, you have to head into the courtroom, where you have to prove your client's innocence, to find the truth and to find out new clues, and that's pretty much it with most cases. Repeat and rinse, and that's the basic gameplay loop for the entire series. It's pretty good, and stays the same for most games. Except for one game, because for one case, it pisses the fuck out of me. Now it's time to head in the courtroom, and we're finally going to meet the main prosecutor of the game, Miles Edgeworth. Easily one of the most popular and beloved prosecutors in the entire franchise. He's a perfect opposite to Phoenix Wright, and is one of my favorite characters in the entire franchise. He's such a wonderful character, and is so goaded to the point where he returns multiple times in the franchise, and doesn't feel phoned in in the games that I've seen him returned in. The two actually have a shared history together, being classmates and friends, though... You wouldn't be able to tell in this case. Miles is arrogant, cold, and overall, just kind of a douchebag to Phoenix, which greatly confuses him, and you'll, and you'll find out later in the game. So, remember how I mentioned that Red White owns a blackmailing company? So yeah, we find out that he's extremely shady, and has been blackmailing everybody, from Mr. Hemorrhoids, to even me and Maya's mother. This is a huge conspiracy, and even contributed to the DL6 case, which like before, you'll find out more later on in the game. While this episode is great and really cool, I have a problem with this episode. It's because... How do you go from robbery to a fucking conspiracy? Don't get me wrong, it's still a really good case and I liked it a lot despite all of that. While I do wish this was a game ender case, it's also probably for the best that it's a second episode here since losing Mia so early on in the franchise helps Phoenix to grow as a lawyer and to rely on himself. Before I end this look at Turnabout Sisters, I want to take a look at another fantastic character. And that being... Dick Gumshoe. Want to know why I love him? Dick is a dumb character who is consistently hilarious throughout the trilogy and never gets tiring, and I love him. With all that said, let's move on to the next case, Turnabout Samurai. It's okay, and that's really disappointing. The case begins with a snippet of a television show called The Steel Samurai. Since now you should be familiar with what's going on in an Ace Attorney case, I'll lay it simple. A murder has occurred and this time it's happened on the set of The Steel Samurai. The cues this time is Will Powers and... This is the most forgettable episode in the entire game. The characters in Turnabout Samurai are just not interesting. One that comes to mind is Wendy Oldbag. They didn't even try with her name. Her main gimmick is just talking way too much and being an old geezer. I will say though, seeing her in court with Miles is just hilarious. The poor dude is trying to prove that Will is guilty, but she keeps on rambling over and over and over and over again. That said, it doesn't make her funny, it makes Miles funny. There's also this kid who's so forgettable that I don't remember anything about him. I don't remember his name, and I don't care to check what it is. The dude's annoying and there's not much else to say about him. There's also this gross... weed. Hey, I may be a weeb, but at least I'm a weeb with standards of not being gross. If there was one word to describe him, I would call him gross. There's a few more characters here, but they're all just kind of weak, with none being memorable enough other than Old Bag, who's memorable for a bad reason. The most interesting character here is only interesting because of her name, which is Penny Nichols. Do you get it? It's a funny name because her name is made out of coins. Ha ha ha. Laugh. The villain here is also just not super interesting, uh, at least to me. She's so unmemorable that I had to look up what her name was and what her motive was. Also, me appearing as Maya is weird as fuck. On a more positive note though, the episode that comes right after this is amazing and is the best in the entire game. And now that I'm done editing this part, damn this section is the shortest of the entire video. That tells you what I think about this case. 
Turnabout Goodbye is the final case in the initial release of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. This is my favorite case in the entire game, for the best reasons. It's insanely good because of how well written it is, the twists and turns, and introducing a new prosecutor. But before I can talk about any of that, we need to know what the fuck happened here. The case opens up to an area lake with two individuals on a boat. They're talking and then suddenly, one of them goes down. We then see Miles with a gun. Shock. That's one hell of an introduction, and the thing is, this entire case is crazy, and it consistently shocked me with how weird it went, and it's one hell of a way to end the game. It gets crazier and crazier, and I love it. Turnabout Goodbyes is my favorite case of the entire game, and you'll see why now. Turnabout Goodbyes is a final case of the game, and thus ties in a lot of plot points from previous cases together to provide an amazing conclusion. Turnabout Goodbyes is fantastic, and I'll show you why here. So, since Miles is unavailable as a prosecutor for fucking murder, we're introduced to another prosecutor, Manfred Von Karma. Just take one look at him, and you'll instantly know that Von Karma is here to win, at any cost. His name tells you what type of guy he is. He ain't a boyfriend, he's a Manfred. Von Karma is a brutal prosecutor who has never lost a case in 40 years. Except for one, but we won't talk about it because someone scares me. And you quickly learn why during the trial. The dude doesn't care about justice at all, and instead cares about winning the case at any cost. The animations of the game present his character perfectly, from his tis tisk smirking and thinking. It's also... I'm not sure how to describe it, but it makes me shit my pants in fear every time I think about it. He's not just intimidating in the courtroom. Outside, he looks fucking scary. And it's not just because he looks weird facing us. But, hey, my parents told me to never judge a person by their looks, so... The dude has a fucking stun gun and uses it against us. Von Karma is an amazing prosecutor and one of my favorite antagonists in the entire series. There's so much to him that makes me fear and hate him. And that makes the ending of this case so, so much better, which I'll talk about when the time is right. Oh, and did I mention you have to interrogate a fucking parrot? This case goes fucking crazy, and I love it. Here we get to see a side of Edgeworth that we've never seen before, and we get to learn the truth of what happened in the DLS6 case. I already loved Edgeworth a lot beforehand, but it's here when... I truly adored him as a character, and it's heartbreaking to learn what happened to him. Losing his father at such a young age changed him forever, and Von Karma changed him even further, for the worst. And near the final part of the trial, it's Edgeworth who starts to believe that he shot his father, but as you know, it's Von Karma. Manfred Von Karma was humiliated in the DL6 case, since his streak was broken. And ultimately, it was Von Karma who shot and killed Gregory Edgeworth, plays countless user trauma for Miles, and put the blame on an innocent person. And that's why seeing Von Karma break down in the trial feels so satisfying. Him hitting his head faster and faster and him screaming feels so good. Please don't take this out of context. Oh, and it's also pretty cool to see Larry return from the first case, though the role he plays here is of course less than before, but it doesn't matter, he's still the GOAT. I love this case, and I hope you can see why. It has the best writing in the entire game, the best revelations, and the best character growths. With all that said, this is a great conclusion, and it's time to say goodbye to the game, and... Rise from the Ashes is a case that I like, but find myself souring on the more I play Ace Attorney. In the 2008 port of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney to the DS, Capcom would include a brand new case with new characters that would reappear later in the franchise. This episode would feature a brand new story. Chronologically, this takes place after Turnabout Goodbyes and before the events of Justice for All. Rise from the Ashes, unsurprisingly, stars Phoenix Wright, who hasn't taken it on a new case since Turnabout Goodbyes. While I did enjoy Rise from the Ashes, I also dropped it after a while since it felt frustrating and slow. I didn't get back to it until I finished Justice for All and Trials and Tribulations. I did enjoy it, but with an asterisk. The worst part about any video game is when there's an impossible puzzle that the game expects you to solve with no help. Guess what Rise from the Ashes does? The puzzles in Rise from the Ashes are annoying and just plain frustrating at times. I had to spend so much time trying to figure out what was going wrong in this video. And don't even get me started on the base puzzle, or I'll fucking scream. And while the story in Rise from the Ashes was pretty good and the truths behind the mysteries even better, I just find it too frustrating to fully enjoy, and I don't think it's a bad idea to skip this one. Fire Phoenix? I'll just let the man go. That shows you how frustrating the case is. It doesn't help at all that Rise from the Ashes is the longest case in the game, with it being 8 hours long, with the development of this case taking as long as the original game did. I do like Rise from the Ashes, but it has a lot of flaws that bring it down. 
Alongside featuring characters that would reappear in Apollo Justice Ace Attorney like Emma Sky, Rise from the Ashes also introduced a new gameplay feature not seen in the original release. It's not too significant and you don't see a return in the rest of the trilogy, but it's pretty cool. I'm talking about item inspection, which lets you rotate an item around. It's like Resident Evil, but now you're not under the constant threat of murder, so that's a big plus. In fact, my biggest annoyance from the case came from a puzzle that required you to position the item just right. It's likely you understand where the problem comes in if you've played Rise from the Ashes. There's also some occasional new ways to uncover evidence, but it's nothing too big. There is something I have to praise about Rise from the Ashes. <laughs> What? There is something I have to praise about Rise from the Ashes. It's that I like the new characters a lot. Emma Sky is a joy. Angel Star is really pretty. And Grant is a fantastic villain who reminds me a lot of a future culprit. Even though Rise from the Ashes has its problems, I will say that adding a fifth episode is for the best overall. While the base game is great, you only had two episodes to fight with Miles, which didn't feel like it was enough. So I'm happy they added this final episode. The Ace Attorney games are some of the best visual novels that I've ever played, and it's insane how Capcom turned something that could be boring into something that is constantly enthralling. The first Ace Attorney game may be basic, but it's still a bloody fantastic time. The characters here are hilarious, smart, and always pretty good. While Trials and Tribulations is my favorite of the series, I can guarantee you that you'll have a good time here. And not just because of Larry Butts. Oh, looks like I'm getting a phone call. Give me a second. Sorry, we got the wrong person. You're free to go. Good news, everybody. It looks like you'll miss it. They got the wrong person, but... Got another phone call. Ah, shit. I forgot. Turns out you got charged for battery. I'm going to jail for assault? When the fuck did I... Oh yeah.